In this video, we'll be creating this simple pause menu, which has some basic functionality, including interactable buttons, a music toggle, which also has a genre selection, and a volume slider. We won't be writing any code for this, because we'll be using some of the UI controls that come included with Nova. Nova comes with several styles out of the box, but for this video, we'll be using this modern style. So let's jump into Unity and get started. The first thing I'll do is I'll add a UI block 2D as the root for the pause menu. I'll set the color to be a bright blue kind of color, somewhere around there. And then I'll add the screen space component so that it renders in screen space. So this will be the backing panel of our menu. Now I'll add a text block, which I'll call label. I'll have this say game paused. I'll switch the font over to the Nunito font and I'll set the font size to 720. I'll have the text block shrink on both axes so that it resizes with the size of the text. I'll set the font color to black and then I'll top align it with a bit of offset. And now let's add a UI block 2D, which I'll call nav card. The style that I'm going for with this menu is this modern kind of design style, and I want to have a card like this with this 3D effect where it looks like it's popping out of the menu. The way we can achieve that is by having a dark drop shadow on one side and a light drop shadow on the other. So let's replicate that. First, I'll increase the size of this nav card UI block to 500 by 500, and I'll round the corners. And then I'll enable this outer shadow here. I'll set the blur to 16 and the offset to positive 16 on X and negative 16 on Y. I'll also make it a bit more transparent so it's not quite so dark. But now if we set the body color to be the same as the backing panel color, you can see we have this nice rounded drop shadow effect. To get the light drop shadow, I'll just duplicate this nav card UI block and make it a child. I'll rename it to controls since this is where we'll put our controls and buttons and things later. I'll set the drop shadow to be white and then I'll invert the offset. So it'll be negative 16 on X and positive 16 on Y. And now we have those two shadows. The other thing I'll do is I'll have the nav card shrink on both axes so that it matches the size of the UI controls UI block. And that way if we resize it on either axis, both of the shadows adjust properly. So now let's add a button. I'll use one of the modern style buttons included with Nova. I'll set the size to be something like 300 by 100. And now what I can do is actually, if I duplicate this a few times, I can enable the auto layout on the controls UI block. I'll add some spacing here, 48. And then I'll have this shrink on both axes as well so that it matches the size, although I'll add some padding here. And now if we decide to add another button, or modify the spacing, both of the shadows adjust properly. So now let's go ahead and adjust the labels on these buttons. I want this top button to be the resume button. I want the middle button to be the settings button. And then I want this bottom button to be the exit button. I also want the settings button to be gray. So let's go ahead and pick a gray color here, something like that. And then I'll just pick a lighter gray for the gradient and for the shadows. So I'll copy this, I'll use this for the inner shadow as well as the drop shadow. And then because this button handles the different gesture states like hovered and pressed, we need to make sure to apply these colors to the item visual. So I use the body color for the default color, the shadow color for the press color, and for the hovered color, I'll just split the difference so it gets brighter as you hover and then press it. And I'll do something very similar for the exit button, except I want this color to be red, somewhere around there. And then for the gradient and the shadows, I'll just pick a slightly brighter red, something like that. So I'll apply this here and to the drop shadow. And finally, I'll make sure to apply these colors to the item visuals. So the body color will be the default color, the shadow color will be the pressed color, and the hovered color will just split the difference. So this is a good testing point. Let's make sure that we got these colors correct. The one thing we'll need to do before we can test out these gestures is we need to add an input manager to our scene. This is included with the UI controls with Nova. So let's go ahead and add that and play. And now if we hover our buttons, they properly change color and we can press each of them. That looks good. So now let's add some controls to the bottom of our menu. So first I'll add a UI block here, which I'll call footer. I'll bottom align this and then I'll expand the width and I'll add some margin just to give us some spacing. And then finally I'll shrink on the Y axis so that it resizes with the UI controls that we're about to add. I'll duplicate this nav card UI block and then I'll make it a child of the footer. I'll rename this to music since this will be our music selection. I'll go down here and I'll delete these buttons that we added and now let's get the positioning correct. I'll zero out the Y position and then I'll left align it. And now let's add a toggle here. This will be our music toggle. Let's adjust the padding on the controls UI block. I'll make the top and bottom padding be 16. And now let's adjust the label here. We'll make this say music. And what I want to happen is whenever this music toggle is clicked, I want to enable and disable a genre selection. So let's go ahead and add a drop down. Let's adjust the auto layout here to be on the X axis. And now let's go down here and on the toggled event, we'll add this drop down and we'll call game object set active with the toggled state. 
And now let's add some options for music genres. I'll have rock, hip hop, pop, and techno. And I'll start this dropdown as disabled. So now let's go ahead and add our volume slider. So I'll duplicate this music selection and I'll add, I'll rename this to volume. I'll right align this and let's get rid of these controls here and replace them with a slider. I also want this slider to have a label. So let's go ahead and add a text block here. I'll have this say volume. I'll change the font to the Nunito font and I'll make the font color be black. And then I'll increase the font size to something like 380. I'll shrink on both axes so that it resizes. I want this label to be on the left side of the slider, so let's go ahead and move this over here. And there we go. Let's test this out, make sure these work. So the volume slider, we can click and drag. If we enable the music, we can select our genre. The dropdown goes down, which is not what we want since it's at the bottom of the menu. So let's go ahead, if we go to the dropdown visuals, we can see that there's this expand down option. If we click that, now it'll expand up and we can change our genre. So let's go ahead and make sure to apply that expand down change. The last thing we'll do, because this menu has a pretty simple design, let's add an animating background just to make things more interesting. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add a UI block 2D under the pause menu. I'll call this dots. I'll expand so that it fills the entire menu. I'll move this up so that it renders underneath all the rest of our content. I'll add the dots texture here and let's change the color. I'll make it be white, but I'll make it be pretty transparent so it's not quite as overwhelming. And now I'll set the scale mode here to envelop so that it fills the entire UI block. The way I'm going to animate this is with Unity's animation system. So I'll bring up the animation window. Let's go ahead and create an animation. And what we can do is just adjust the center UV property of the image. So I'll add a property here. I'll go to the UI block in the visuals image adjustment center UV. Let's add that in. And for this keyframe, we'll start it off at negative one. And I want this to be a fairly slow animation. So I'll zoom out here to let's say 40 seconds and I'll have this keyframe be one. Now I can delete this keyframe that Unity adds automatically. And the last thing I need to do is I want this to be a constant time animation. So let's go to the curve sheet and we'll just set both tangents to be linear. So let's go ahead and test this out. And now we have this nice slow animating background, which just make things a bit more interesting. And that brings us to the end of the video. Hopefully this helps you get started with using Nova.